Welcome to the Australian Hiker Podcast, Australia's longest running hiking podcast downloaded over three quarters of a million times in over 145 countries and providing you with an Australian perspective on all things hiking. We're your hosts, Tim and Jill Savage. This is episode 221 of the Australian Hiker Podcast. And in this week's episode, I bring you interviews from the trail from my recent East Gippsland Rail Trail trip. We hope you enjoy. Before we get into today's episode, if you'd like to help support Australian Hiker and this podcast, there are a couple of ways that you can help us out. Firstly, by subscribing on your podcast host of choice so that each episode is available as soon as it's published. And if you have the opportunity, leave us a five-star review. Another way to support us is go to the Australian Hiker website at www.australianhiker.com.au and click on the supporters page and buy us a coffee. You can do a one-off donation or become a monthly supporter. All donations are greatly appreciated and help us to continue producing this podcast and blog. Now let's get on to today's episode. In this episode, I'll bring you a series of on-trail recordings from my recent East Gippsland Rail Trail trip. These will provide you with an indication of how I was feeling and what I was thinking over the duration of this trip and hopefully provide a bit of an overview about whether this is something you might consider. It's 9.45 on Friday night. I'm just here in my hotel room in Orbost uh, after a four-hour drive down from Canberra. Uh, And then uh, once I arrived, I sort of just got all my gear into the room headed out for dinner and I've just been uh, lazing around for the last few hours just uh, watching TV, um, working out what I'm doing for tomorrow and also listening to the very steady, not heavy but solid rain that's been going on for many hours. It's interesting, when I first looked at this um, weather conditions about three or four days ago, it was rain forecast but very, very light. It's still the case that there is rain forecast, but it's increased and it's still not heavy. But um, at the moment, looking at the, the satellite images, it's raining over all, all Bost, which is the end of the trail I'm starting from. Uh, and then at the Bansdale end, it's bone dry. So um, it's the way it is, I suppose. One pleasant surprise I had was um, I originally thought I had around about four and a half kilometres to walk from my motel to the trackhead uh, and I worked it out this evening that it's only 2.9 kilometres. So I originally thought that I had a 30 kilometre walk tomorrow uh, that might be a little bit shorter than that. So that's a, a bonus there. Okay, time to go to bed and I will be heading off walking from my motel in the morning. It's 6.58, it's Saturday morning and it's day one of my East Gippsland rail trail walk. I'm just sitting in my hotel room, Uh, I've just had breakfast, cleaned myself up, done everything I need to do, Uh, I've just moved my car uh, because I'm leaving it here until I return on Tuesday evening, so I've just moved it out of the way, Uh, but it's just handy being able to store it off street basically. Uh, and know that it should be here when I get back. Rain stopped probably around about 11 o'clock midnight, and it seems to have held off. But it was quite funny this morning. I woke up, and I thought, oh, geez, it's dark. And, uh, uh, and, you know, we are getting towards winter time. You know, the shortest day of the week is only about roughly three weeks away. And it realized it was solid cloud cover. There's also some fog. Uh, and while it's not raining, it, it is quite dark still. Uh, but it's uh, it's certainly light enough that I can see what's going on and uh, it is picking up as it goes. I've got a new pack for this walk. Um, it's a 36-litre pack, which is only slightly bigger than the one I took on the Three Capes walk earlier this year. Uh, and I'm managing to get everything... Uh, I've got to be considerate about how I pack. I can't just shove stuff in and not worry about where it goes. But that's never been me anyway, so uh, it's fit quite comfortably into there, Um, and it's it's going to be nice to have 
not this huge, big, bulky thing sitting on my back. So I'll see how that goes over the next four days. Looking forward to it. Uh, and I think, as I mentioned in the previous uh, recording, I've got about 2.9 kilometres to go to the official start of the trail. But as I mentioned in the previous podcast episode, it just makes sense to uh, stop off at Orbost while there is accommodation uh, virtually across the road from where the walk starts itself. Um, my bus trip back from Barnsdale, Bansdale, whatever it is you pronounce it, uh, is uh, going to drop me off in Orbost and then I'd either have to get a taxi or walk a couple of kilometres back t- to where I was going. So it just made things easy to, to, to use Orbost as the base. And Orbost is a much bigger town, uh, much more choice as far as as food as well. Okay, I'm just going to do my last couple of packing things, which is putting this recorder away, and I'm pretty much right to go. I've been going for just on an hour now, and I've covered 4.52 kilometres from the hotel, which was actually the distance I thought I was going to have to cover to get to the official start of the trailhead, which is where I am now. So the connecting road, which does have signage and does talk about the rail trail, is more, this is the way you're heading, uh, and the official start is where I'm sitting now, which is actually in a shelter. Uh, There's a picnic table outside, uh, which is out in the rain. Uh, There's some little signage. There's an old railway signalling sign, uh, and inside the rail trail shelter is um, a map uh, and some brochures as well. Um, moving at a reasonably good pace. I'm happy that I've covered four and a half kilometres in an hour. Um, I, I don't know if you can hear it in the background. It is raining fairly steadily and it's not torrential, but it's pretty solid. So um, I've actually been walking just off the trail itself on the road uh, because my feet were getting saturated. The trail itself uh, from here looks to be much more decent. So I think this, uh, I'll I'll see how it goes, but it looks like I'll be able to stay onto the trail. Uh, It's a bit more solid, looks like it's got a bit more gravel on it, so I'll be able to keep off the road itself. The rain is only supposed to be five mils today, but if this keeps up for the whole day, uh, it's going to be 20, 25 mils. It's pretty pretty steady and pretty solid, so uh, all rain kitted out, uh, pack cover on, um, and... I'll see how I go tonight. If this keeps up the whole day, I'll just say, bugger it, I won't do the tent. I'll just get a, uh, uh, a, a room. So I'm staying at Tostery tonight, which is an accommod- accommodation facility just off the trail. Uh, and I had originally organised a tent site. But as I said, I'll see how I go. If this just keeps up like this, I'll, I'll just book a room and go from there. And that's one of the advantages of this site. Um, you can actually hotel it or caravan or cabin it all the way through. So I could have potentially lost the tent, uh, lost the, uh, the sleeping mat and lost the sleeping pad and just lightened my load a bit. Uh, but I wasn't too sure how things would go and whether I could cover the distances that I was planning on. So today's 30 kilometres um, and I'm so far so good. I'm feeling really good. I started working with physical uh, trainer, a fitness trainer, Uh, in February this year, and that's really paid off. I'm feeling a lot better on the trail than I have done in a long time. It's only early days, only five, you know, four four and a half kilometres, but I'm feeling really good. Okay, I might just grab a quick snack, have something to eat, and then I will head off. It's 10 o'clock. I've been going now for uh, probably just under three hours, and I'm averaging... Uh, uh, 4.9 kilometres per hour when I'm moving and I've covered, according to my GPS, just on 13 kilometres. Moving at a reasonably good pace, actually. Uh, And I think when we interviewed Damien from Rail Trails Australia, one of the things he did mention is a lot of these trails were built for the old steam locomotives so the gradient couldn't be too steep. And that's what I'm finding with this, that when there are changes, you're going uphill or downhill, it's barely noticeable. Uh, I think, you know, you look 100 metres down the road and you can often see that far because it is such a straight sort of track that you uh, you can see there's a slight incline or a decline, but you're not actually changing elevation very much. So in that respect, if you're not a fan of hills, uh, 
uh, so far, and again, we've I've only done 13 kilometres of this track. It's been pretty easy and pretty uh, pretty easy to keep a good pace. And given that I've got a, a pack that weighs 13 kilos, um, that's I'm quite quite happy with that sort of pace. Uh, usually, if I'm walking around town with a, a a four or five kilo pack when I go to work, uh, I'm I'm maybe getting up to six kilometres an hour, but that's a, that's about it. So it's not slowing me down too much. Saw one kangaroo this morning, and that was probably my mistake more than anything else. It was uh, going through a fence and tripped itself up uh, and made a bit of noise, uh, but otherwise I wouldn't have noticed it. A uh, few kookaburras, um, and again, you may be able to occasionally hear the odd bird in the background making a noise, uh, but not in much in the way of other wildlife so far. But given that it has been raining, and it's sort of been raining on and off, uh, it's... Uh, not surprising that I'm not seeing a lot of wildlife, although I did see one rabbit. Uh, vegetation, uh, it's actually quite reasonably vegetated along the track. So whether this is something they've replanted uh, since they've turned it into a rail trail, or the vegetation has just made its way back uh, since there's no train coming down here. A lot of apacris in flower at the moment. I've seen reds, I've seen pinks, I've seen whites. Some of the high yellow flowering hibernias, uh, and given that we are just about winter time, um, it's not unsurprising that I'm not going to see a huge amount of vegetation and flower. Uh, spring and uh, uh, mid spring and late spring is probably going to be the peak time for that. Uh, but it's quite a pleasant walk, even though it is raining or it has been raining. Um, I'm, I'm glad the rain has stopped. I've still got my rain gear on and I'm not game to take it off because it's it stopped for about half hour, 40 minutes and came back again. Now it's stopped again. Uh, and it looks like it might be okay, but I've still got a fairly almost 100% cloud cover. So I'm not going to assume it's going to go anywhere. But yeah, no, I'm making a good pace. Uh, I've got roughly 17 kilometres to go uh, to my accommodation tonight. Um so, again, based on my the speed that I'm going, four hours, which should get me there, say, roughly around about two o'clock. Uh, although I will have a lunch break before then, so it might be sometime between about two and three. And this is one of the things I was trying to work out today. My last day is pretty much a similar sort of distance. I think it's probably half a kilometre longer. And given that I've got, a, got to meet a bus to get a, a bus trip back to... Uh, or bossed at 5.30, I wanted to be there with sort of two hours to spare just to make sure if anything went wrong, I'm, I was covered. So leaving at 7 o'clock looks like it's it's probably going to get me there about the right sort of time. But I'll see how it goes. Certainly um, that last day I might sort of start walking sort of 6.30 uh, just to give myself that bit of extra time up my sleeve. Okay, I'll just have a bit of a snack and I'll head off. It's 12.33. I've just stopped for lunch on the side of the road uh, and trying to find a, a log to sit on, which was really hard on this trail. Uh, and um, also because it started to rain again, trying to find somewhere that's under a bit of shelter from the trees. Uh, under under the trees, getting a bit of shelter from the rain, uh, which is not heavy, but it's uh, heavy enough to be annoying while I'm sitting here. I've covered 22.65 kilometres, so I've got roughly... Seven, seven and a half kilometres to go accommodation. Uh, so realistically, I'm travelling, I've slowed down marginally. I'm now travelling at 4.8 kilometres an hour, where for much of the, this morning I was travelling at 4.9. But that also tends to include brakes as well. So uh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, the this, this track pretty much is going through... I'll say forest um, as much as anything else, uh, native bushland, and I don't know how far it goes back. On the right-hand side of the road, it looks like it goes quite a way. Left-hand side of the road, it does go a reasonable distance, but I can also hear the highway in the distance as well, so or, or the main road, whatever, whatever it is by this stage. There's a bit of water off to the sides of the road, so you, can, you may be able to hear the frogs croaking in the background. It may not be. Um, and I've noticed that's been the case where uh, whenever I've walked and thinking, oh, if I was going to put a tent up, where would I put it up? And you look off the side of the road and find there's a lot of water. Uh, water's good. It's not a problem about getting water, but trying to find spat, flat spaces. Uh, 
And certainly where I'm sitting now, just looking across the down the short hill across the road, there'd be places to put a tent up if you really needed to. Now, in all honesty, I'm not too sure what the status of tents are in the rail trail corridor. That's something I'll have to put a question to uh, the Rail Trails Association to see what the, the policy is. Um, but uh, I've got a tent. Worst case situation, if I really needed to camp, I could do, uh, legal or not. Um, but I am covered just in case. Given that it keeps on raining on and off, um, as I said, I may well look at getting a room rather than tenting it uh, for accommodation at night. I'll see how I go. Still feeling reasonably good, but I'm starting to get tired. You know, 22 odd kilometres, I've still got another 7 odd to go, so I will definitely have a good sleep tonight. And the rain is starting to pick up and get a bit heavier now, so I'll stop the recording, grab some food and then head off. It's 4.54, day one on my journey on the East Gippsland Rail Trail, and I'm just sitting here having dinner at the moment. Might seem a bit early for most people, but um, I'm not going to be out of bed long. And the fog's actually settling in not far behind where the camping area is. And I think the cloud has actually cleared out. So I've had a pretty much cloudy day and rain pretty much on and off the whole day. And I was actually thinking about getting a cabin, but there was nothing available here. So it's, it's tent. Good day overall. Did just over 31.3 kilometres uh, from my hotel to where I am here. Uh, and that's added a bit of distance to uh, the trip because, um, you know, the distance from the hotel to the trailhead and the distance off the trail to where I'm staying now is about another 400 metres, so it adds it up a bit. Uh, so potentially this is my biggest day or it'll be close to my biggest day. Tired, but I managed to do the 31Ks quite well. Um, and uh, it was around about 7 hours and 45 minutes worth of walking all up, so an averaging 4.8 kilometres an hour, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so if I can maintain that over the next couple of days, uh, it means my last day where I walk into Bansdale and I've got to catch a 5.30 bus back, back to uh, uh, my car means that I won't have to race or get there really early. I, I, I realistically really want to get there about two hours before the bus leaves just to allow a bit of uh, time in case something goes wrong. Uh, and so I'll probably leave it about quarter to seven on that last day. One of the things I've found for today is apart from the straight and relatively flat sort of track is I was tuning out, which is often the case when I'm doing big, bigger distances, and all of a sudden I'd noticed I was in the middle of a cutting and some of the cuttings are only a couple of metres uh, on either side. Others were sort of 10 or 12 metres on either side. And I was like, oh, OK. You just don't, you just don't realise it until you're getting there because the, there's no change in the gradient on the track. Lots of vegetation. Uh, and again, I expect it to change over the next few days. But uh, I was probably more vegetation than I expected. And... Uh, again, I've still got three more days to go, so I expect it to be looking different on each of the days, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow, I've only got a short day. It's about 11 kilometres into now and now. And the reason for that was if I went any further, the, the next day is 25.5 or 6 kilometres, which would have pushed me to about 35.5 kilometres, which I didn't want to do uh, because I've then got... The day after is about 26, uh, is, is 20, would have been 26 kilometres. Um, because that, that would have, that would have got, got, me, got me finishing the trip in three days. Um, and because the last day is also around about that 30, 31 kilometres. So uh, tomorrow, very cruisy sort of day. I mean, I'm not going to be any rush to get up, but I'm, I'm guessing I'll be up by sort of eight o'clock. And then I'll uh, head into town, which is, as I said, only 11 kilometres away. And the intent is to try and get a caravan because I'm going to be there most of the day. I just want to be out to doze and not be in a tent. OK, that's it for tonight. It's just on nine o'clock on day two, which is a Sunday on my trip on the East Gippsland Rail Trail. I'm still here at Tostery. Uh, I've just packed up, and as soon as I finish this recording, I'll head off. 
I've got around about 10 and a half, 11 kilometers to get into now and now. Uh, this is my shortest day of the three, uh, of the four days I'll be walking. And it just, uh, it was just one of those sort of things where I either had a really long day yesterday, followed by two longish days, uh, or I had a short day yesterday, followed by two longish days. And I didn't, re- while I could have quite comfortably done the extra 11 kilometers yesterday I had the time and I was feeling okay you know that would have pushed me over 41 kilometers uh, which was a bit big for for what I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, had a reasonably good night's sleep last night uh, the there's another couple of staying here in a camper trailer uh, they started a fire up in the uh, recreation area uh, which is a large shed uh, would quite comfortably suit a lot of people if the weather was poor uh, pool table, uh, a foosball table, lots of seating areas and a TV. So you've got plenty of options to, to relax if you don't want to stay in your tent, if that's the case. Because they put the fire on, I managed to dry out all my clothes, that uh, you know, my rain gear, my, my shoes, and I got them dried out. And then I headed to bed probably around about 7 o'clock and very much went to sleep pretty much straight away and had a very good deep sleep until around about 1 o'clock in the morning. Woke up, had to have a, have a loo break. Then it was a matter of just dozing through to, for the rest of the morning. I really didn't go back to sleep fully as such. For me, I tend to operate on around about 6 hours of sleep. Anything past that, I just, I just can't sleep. So got up this morning, probably around about 6.30, uh, given that I only had a short day today, wandered around, took some photos, started packing up, and again, it's taken me this amount of time to fully pack up. As I said, I wasn't really rushed, and I was trying to dry off my tent as best as possible, because we did have some rain last night, probably for around about half an hour, steady, but not overly heavy, but enough to wet the ground and to very much wet the tent. Tent's not fully dry. I think realistically I'd probably need to leave it uh, hanging in the sun for at least another hour to do that. But again, given I've got a short day, I can do that where I'm going to. So looking forward to today's shortish walk. I'm feeling quite good. So on with the day. Good evening. It's six o'clock on day two of my East Gippsland rail trail walk. And I've been at the caravan park when I'm staying at Mingling Waters Caravan Park. And I arrived roughly around about 12.30 after a three and a half hour journey covering just on 12 kilometres. A bit of dawdling today, I suppose. I know that I knew that I had plenty of time. I didn't have to worry too much about whether I arrived on a particular time frame. So my average moving speed today was 4.6 kilometres according to my GPS whereas yesterday I was travelling at 4.8 kilometres. So pretty good, actually. Felt reasonably good, but certainly worn down by yesterday's just over 31 kilometres walking. So having the 10 kilometres, uh, or, or in fact, fact it ended up being 12 kilometres walk today, made a, a bit of a difference. It was a, a bit of a way of easing into it. And the other thing was that I also had a nice sunny sort of walk as well. No rain. Uh, it wasn't overly hot, but it wasn't cold. Uh, it was just a really pleasant walk through a lot of forested area. And for the first time uh, on this trip, getting some really serious infrastructure. Yesterday, I was coming up with bits and pieces of infrastructure, uh, particularly at the start of the walk. Uh, but today, I came across three bridges in various states of repair. Something that was a bit different from yesterday. Yesterday, pretty much, I followed the old rail corridor almost exclusively once I actually started the walk formally. Uh, today, I was off to the side of the rail corridor, and it looked like in the, some of the areas that the rail corridor had now become creek or waterway, uh, so there were management roads just off to the side. And you could really obviously see where the cuttings were and where the rail track was, but it was just too wet and too overgrown, so they've obviously decided a management road was a, a good option. Probably had one of the longest stretches of uh, track today i think i reckon it was probably around about two and a half kilometers of just straight track all the way down uh, before i had a slight curve and then it sort of continued on straight from there and this is certainly the biggest thing i've noticed so two days uh, and 
it's really a matter of straight track, very gentle curves, and if there is any incline, it's really, really slight. So if you don't like hills, this is a good track to do. The only ups and downs that I had where we were skirting around a couple of the bridges which you couldn't go over the top of, one of the bridges was half burnt in the fires from 2011. Another one of the bridges was still pretty intact, but there was no way you could get across it. There were, there were missing uh, bits of timber across the top. So even if you tried, and then technically there was nothing stopping you from doing it. There was no barriers in place, but it wouldn't have been safe. Uh, and then the third bridge as well, not really accessible, uh, but still relatively intact. So it's good to see those nice bridges, and, and certainly at least one of those will end up being the cover image, I think, for this walk. The caravan park I'm staying in, I was originally planning on tenting it, um, but apparently while today was nice and sunny, tomorrow and the next day is basically coming into rainfall. So it's um, I just wanted somewhere I could stay nice and dry out of the uh, uh, out of the rain. So really, with tomorrow maximum of 13 degrees. 70% chance of rain, 3 to 6 millimetres. The next day, Tuesday, which is my last day, again, 70% chance of rain, roughly 1 to 4 millimetres of rain. Uh, also becoming windy. So it's, uh, and I believe that somebody, in fact, the weather forecast says it as well. I was talking to someone at lunchtime saying, oh, we're expecting snow and the higher peaks. And certainly uh, the weather forecast is saying falling as snow above 1,200 metres initially, lowering to 800 metres by the late evening. Now, I'm well and truly below that. I think the maximum altitude I pick up on the entire walk is about 146 metres, but potentially that's going to drop the, te the, uh, the temperatures a bit. Uh, so I think the temperature on Tuesday, maximum 12, minimum 7, which is actually quite comfortable from my perspective. I... Started thinking about this trip as far as who would do this walk. You know, it certainly doesn't have the the grand views of the Overland Track or the Lara Pinta Trail. Um, you know, there's not thousands of animals around. So far, my animal count's pretty much been one rabbit, one kangaroo, lots of birds. There are a lot of birds around, and I have never never seen so many kookaburras in my life, they're pretty much constant throughout the whole whole trail, uh, and sometimes they they they're laughing. Other times, they're just flying across the trail. So that was pretty impressive. Um, I've trip tomorrow is roughly about twenty six kilometres, uh, so I will start or I will leave here probably around about seven o'clock. Again, even travelling at 4.5 kilometres per hour, which I'm travelling faster than, it gets me to my next town quite comfortably. And again, I'm either going to be tenting it or staying in one of the, the local accommodation options. I'll see how it goes. But, you know, if it's going to be raining, my preference is to not sleep in a tent. And this is something that surprised me in some respects. I think I mentioned in the uh, introductory podcast, which is the previous episode to this, this really isn't bushwalking. It's more hiking in, in that, yes, you are walking through forested areas, but you're also walking through farmland and you're walking through a number of towns. And, it, and it's funny, when I did the Bibbleman track in 2018, I basically had a town stay about every seven to eight days and that gave me an opportunity to wash my clothes, to re get my resupply box and continue on. Uh, but I was also staying in shelters uh, pretty much exclusively along the way. Whereas here on this one, it's uh, I think the potential is, you know, if you really were push come to shove, you could actually sleep on the rail corridor, but you'd want to be conscious about that because free camping in Victoria isn't a thing. Uh, and it made me realise I probably need to do an episode to talk about that because I think a lot of people make assumptions about where and where they can't camp uh, and I think a lot of people make the assumption they can just put a tent up anywhere which is not necessarily the case. So I've spent most of this afternoon, I actually had lunch at the cafe here at the, the caravan park, really nice cafe, good food, really friendly staff uh, and I actually ended up getting the last cabin accommodation and in fact the cabin I'm staying in can basically sleep two four six on bunks and another four on double beds so potentially it would sleep 10 people and I've got this whole place to myself 
pretty basic, no TV set, but you know, there's a kitchen here, fridge, microwave, uh, no TV. Uh, so I'm watching watching uh, episodes of various shows on my phone at the moment, which is something a bit different. So this is very different from a bushwalk, but also perfectly valid as well. And I think that's that's the thing that surprised me about what options you have to get out and walk and why would you do it. So I'll talk about that more specifically in the Roundup episode, uh, which is next week's episode. But um, I am enjoying it. Uh, I the, the straight tracks, and which are very easy to navigate, at no stage do you ever think, am I on the right track? Uh, the signage is really good. The track's really easy to follow. Um, so you, it does allow you to tune out a bit. And that's the thing I like about doing the longer walks. You can just zone out, think about the worries of the world and still be perfectly safe in the process. I'm sure in the middle of summer you might actually get snakes down here as well, but that certainly hasn't been an issue with the temperature the way it is. I think they've all gone to sleep for the uh, the colder months now. So I'll probably be up for another another two or three hours. I'll get up early in the morning. In fact, I am probably will even pack tonight as well, uh, just so it means I can virtually wake up whatever time and just go... Usually I find I sort of dawdle around in the mornings, spend a lot of time packing, whereas if I can get it done tonight, it'll just make things nice and easy. Okay, I think I will head off and do what I need to do, and I'll talk to you in the morning. It's 6.52, day three of my East Gippsland Rail Trail journey. And I'm just in my accommodation here at the caravan park. And I'm just about just putting everything together in my pack, uh, having my breakfast, and I'm about to head off. I just went out to go to the uh, the bathroom a couple of minutes ago. I've got my own bathroom, but it's outside. And I'm thinking, yeah, I might just put on my coat this morning. And it's been a long time since I've done that on a hike. Normally, as soon as I start moving, I warm up. But the the, uh, the temperatures around about six point seven feels like one point something, and it's it's that feels like it's that really moist, cold sort of temperature you you only get when you've had rain. I don't know if I'll stay with that jacket on for long, but I think certainly uh, um, I'm going to need my uh, buff and my jacket just to keep me warm for for at least the first twenty minutes, half an hour. I'll see what goes from there. The forecast today is for rain, and looking at the weather radar, it's there's a, a band of rain coming across, and I don't think it's going to stay all day, uh, but certainly looking at it, it'll probably be with me for a couple of hours. So uh, supposedly it's supposed to start raining at around about 7 o'clock, but I think it's still a, a few hours away yet. Had a very good night's sleep, and in fact, according to my uh, my Fitbit, I had my best sleep in about the last seven days, which uh, doesn't surprise me. I, when I went to bed, I just crashed, uh, woke up in the middle of the night and needing to go to the loo, had a bit of a disturbed sleep, and then had a, a good sleep from there on. Yeah, it uh, makes a difference being in a, an, on a nice soft mattress compared to being on a even on a good quality uh, air bed in, in a sleeping bag. Tonight I'm heading to Brethren, um, and that's around about 26 kilometres away. I had originally planned to tent, and that's probably the way I'll end up by the look of it. Um, I was trying to see if I can get a room at the local inn, uh, but they haven't returned my call yet. So I'll try them again this morning and see how it goes. Failing that, it's tenting it, and then that's fine. And this is my last night's sleep on the trail. Uh, but again, it's forecast is for rain even through tonight. So my preference is not to be in a tent all night if I can help it. Yeah, it's uh, looking forward to today and I will just finish my packing and my breakfast and I'm off. It's 8.56. I've been going for an hour and 35 minutes and I've just found a good spot on the side of the road just to go through and take a break. Um, I'm always on the lookout for the appropriate rock or log, uh, just at the right sort of height and not too wet, and I managed to find one uh, that worked quite well. Been going quite well this morning. In fact, my travelling pace at the moment is 5.4 kilometres an hour, and that's in some respect due to the tr- the uh, actual trail itself being such a gentle gradient. It makes it fairly easy to walk. 
but in all honesty, I haven't walked this sort of distance and this sort of space, this sort of pace since Bibbulmun Track uh, in 2018. So the personal training I've been doing has paid off. I'm feeling really comfortable and maintaining that, that pace of 5.4 kilometres an hour. I'm just finding it quite easy to do. I highly doubt that by the end of the day that will be the pace. Normally uh, it'll drop off as uh, as I get a bit tighter and I, so I get to uh, my end point. Uh, I thought I had roughly 25.6 kilometres to do today. According to the signage, it's actually 28. I think what I did was... Uh, Enter into Google Maps walking distance from now an hour to Bruthen, and what I ended up doing was uh, uh, doing the shortest distance between two points. And certainly, the trail today isn't that, it actually heads uh, northwest and then heads uh, back down again. So, it's 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 all over the place as far as distances are concerned or the directions is concerned and obviously you've got to go around river systems and you're going through towns which is where the railways obviously went uh the big highlight today so far was uh one of the big bridges and this was uh, uh from memory it was stony creek bridge and this is the image that's shown on the write-up in the guidebook one of the things I did this time, while I've got a, a printed map that shows where I am, uh, I don't have the guidebook. It doesn't show me the highlights. Uh, and while I knew this bridge in particular was probably the the key bit of infrastructure on the whole trail, it really just does dwarf in both size and grandeur a lot of the other wooden bridges I came across yesterday. Really was spectacular, and I think this is the one that's likely to end up being my cover image for my uh, ride up this walk. I think one of the things I find really interesting, I've got a heritage background, and while going to that bridge, you can actually drive there. There's a car park, and there's a, uh, a toilet facility and a picnic table, so you could go there and have a break. It's probably something that I never would have worried about doing. You know, if I had have seen a sign saying Stony Creek Railway Bridge, I would have just kept on driving. Uh, but I think walking this trail, it forces you to see what's there and forces you to look at the infrastructure that's part of the rail system. And I'm really glad that I did do this walk because, you know, this is something I, I would have never have seen or, ta- or paid attention to had I have just been driving around or, or stuck to the bush trails. So based on that alone, that bridge alone, it was well worth the, uh, the trip itself. Temperature-wise is a bit cool still. Um, I don't know what the temperature actually is. I've got my phone in flight mode in my pocket at the moment, uh, but it is still cool. I've got my rain jacket on, and there goes a lyre bird just running across the road. So I'm starting to pick up a bit more wildlife on this road. And it was actually a black lyre bird too, which is not so common. I'm used to seeing the, the brownie-coloured ones. I think... The temperature is definitely cooler today. The forecast was for rain, and I'm still expecting that. And for the first hour, I'm thinking, where's this rain coming from? And sure enough, where I'm sitting at the moment, to the right of the trail, uh, the cloud cover is coming in. So I'm expecting to get rain. Looking at what's happening with it, probably not for another half hour, hour at least. On the just directly above me and to the left of the trail, it's very sunny with a bit of light white cloud, but over to the right, the grey clouds and the solid clouds are coming through. So I'm expecting and I am prepared for rain, so the rain jacket's likely to stay on for most of the day. Today I'm heading to Bruton, um, and this is my last night on the trail, barring anything unforeseen. It's certainly a cold time of the year and I must admit I wasn't expecting to see people on Monday or Tuesday but I thought I might see people on Saturday and Sunday as they were doing some recreational stuff wandering around their local towns but I think given that Saturday was a rainy day and then yesterday people were probably thinking oh look it's been raining I won't worry about it so I've had this trail to myself entirely I have not seen anybody on any section of this trail from start to where I am at the moment so I see what happens I think probably as I get closer to Barnsdale maybe it might be a bit different um, but I've got uh, the towns I'm going to pass through and again forgive me for not being a Victorian and getting pronunciations right Qualquin, Bruthen, then Nicholson and Barnsdale is the end point 
So I think that's the thing with the railway systems. They do go through towns. They're not going to go through the middle of nowhere. They're there as infrastructure originally to connect all these little towns up. So that has surprised me. I thought it would at least see one or two people, uh, but so far no one has yet. Good morning. It's quarter past 11. I'm just sitting here on a seat at the side of the trail, which is actually the start of the Gippsland Lakes Discovery Trail. I had actually thought about this as being an optional add-on to this track, and I thought I was probably cutting it a bit fine with the time I had. And it's probably not a bad thing because the trail is actually closed due to damage through the storms. So I probably would have discovered that once I actually started looking to more in-depth to it. Where I am at the moment, uh, there's a sign just across the edge of the trail was saying Bruth and 11, which is where I'm heading to, and now and now is 17, which is where I come from. And given um, what my GPS watch is telling me, it's pretty much spot on. I think there's about 150 metres difference from what it's supposed to be. Uh, and given that I've just took a couple of small detours and things like that, that would account for that 150 metres quite comfortably. I actually came across a cyclist this morning, uh, which was a bit of a surprise. I was thinking, I'm, I'm going to go the whole, this whole trail and not see anybody. But apparently he was riding from now and now to Bruthen, so distance of 28 kilometres, for a, his morning tea and vanilla slice. Apparently that's his daily routine. And then he heads back again. So not a bad way to burn off morning tea and a vanilla slice by riding 56 kilometres overall. So he said he'd see me on the way back. He stopped and had a chat to me and he did say, I said, look, I was really surprised to see anybody because I haven't seen anyone the last few days. And he said, oh, there's a couple more people on the track. And he saw some people yesterday as well. So obviously timing is probably everything by the sound of it. So I think I'm getting towards the busier end of the trail. Barnsdale, uh, from what I can tell, is a bigger town and a more more regional town than Orbost, although Orbost is a reasonable size as well. But I think as a start, you know, given that the train actually goes to Barnsdale and no longer goes to Orbos, it gives you an indication. That um, wooden bridge that I saw before, it was up until use until 1988. Uh, and now there's a coach that runs from Barnsdale to Orbos. And that's what I'm going to be getting back tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 uh, back to my hotel and back to my, uh, my car for a night's rest before I head back home again on Wednesday. The weather has held off reasonably well. It's um, talking to the cyclist this morning. He said, oh, look, it's going to be later this afternoon. And just looking at what's now, I can see the sun behind the cloud. The cloud's more white than grey and it's more a thin cover. Uh, so it's uh, quite a pleasant day. I'm almost tempted to take my jacket off, but I'm just, I'll am just i toss up and see. Um, it's certainly got to the stage now where it's it's warm enough, but it's not that warm. So I'll have a bit more think on it and see what I do so this should be my last I won't be my last break normally I try and have a, a break about every hour and a half and it was just uh, just this was just an ideal spot with this seat here and it was a good time to do a recording so I thought I'd stop off oh, I've got 11 kilometers and based on my speed at the moment that's probably two and a half hours I would say which will get me to it'll be, what are we, almost 11.30, 12.30, 1.32. It'll get me about to Bruthen at about 2 o'clock. I expected to get there around about 2 to 2.30, so it's pretty much on, on par. And I am starting to slow down slightly, uh, although my GPS is still telling me I'm averaging 5.4 kilometres per hour while I'm moving. Um, but my feet are starting to feel it. I think I'm probably going to have to tape my feet tomorrow because I've got 32 kilometres as I discovered instead of 31.5 and I think I'll need to tape my feet otherwise it's going to be a bit painful towards the end of the day. My feet are finally catching up with uh, the, the abuse I've been giving them. Okay morning tea break and off I go. Good evening it's five to seven in the evening. I'm at Bruthen for my last night on the trail and I was going to be staying in the local caravan park, but given the forecast for today and tomorrow was rain and snowfall in the higher mountains, I decided to opt for an indoor option. So I'm staying at the Bruthen Inn, typical old-fashioned country pub, modern building, it's sort of brick building, but inside it looks like very much like a country pub. Stopped in, grabbed my key virtually straight as I arrived into the uh, the bar area itself and headed to the room. 
I had a shower just to warm myself up. It wasn't overly cold today as such, but I ended up keeping my rain jacket on the entire day. It never really got warm enough that I felt like I was getting hot and sweaty, so that was a, a bit of a difference. The rooms here are pretty basic. Um, I've got 12-foot ceilings. Uh, the room looks like it's out of the, the, the 40s or the 50s in the way it's, it's furnished. Got this lovely little cute sink in the corner, a double bed, uh, which is tiny bit on the short side for me, but that's fine. I can cope with that. Today's trip overall was pretty good. Uh, I ended up covering just on 28 kilometres, pretty much spot on, which is what it was supposed to be. Uh, and I was averaging at 5.3 kilometres per hour, which was going pretty well for me, in all honesty. Normally, I tend to work on 3.75 kilometres an hour, but that's in the Australian Alps where you're going up and up and down mountains and hills and you're going a bit slower as a result. Uh, but I think, as I mentioned previously, the, the gradient on this, and, and it's quite funny, you look at the um, the GPS on my watch, and have a look at what it looks like. And it looks like you're going up and down some steep hills, but the elevation change is so slow. Um, you know, you're, you're taking 100 metres to change a, a metre in altitude. So uh, even though the, the map shows me you've gone over some decent hills, I'm not doing it that often. And in fact, the high point for today was 153 metres and the lowest point was 22 metres. So it shows you the difference, roughly 131 metres change, uh, but really just did not notice it. You know, it was such a, a steady sort of incline change. I managed to beat any sort of rain. I was really expecting to be walking in rain the entire day, as is the, the what I'm expecting tomorrow. And looking at the weather radar, it's showing that there is a very large rain front over the top of us, but it doesn't appear to be raining. So I don't know what's going on there. So I managed to keep myself dry all the way through the hotel. Tonight's feeling like a relatively cold night. It might be just psychological because the forecast is six degrees overnight. But I know the, the, the feels like temperature was a lot colder than that. So tonight, really six, seven degrees, six degrees in the morning, and then sort of a maximum of 13 during the daytime. Tomorrow, I've got a fairly big day, uh, and my feet were definitely starting to feel it after the last three days. Yesterday was a pretty mild sort of day, sort of 11, 12 kilometers or whatever it ended up being, but 32 kilometers on the first day uh, and 28 kilometers today. I will take my feet tomorrow. I've got a 32 kilometre day to get me to Barnsdale uh, and the finishing point from memory was actually where I'm picking up the coach, uh, taking me back to Orbost and the hotel I'll be staying at, which is where my car is. So I've spent a couple of hours this afternoon uh, just waiting for dinner, just having a, a bit of a doze, catching up on news. And then uh, I had dinner at six o'clock at the, the inn. Typical sort of pub food. I tend to always avoid the main meals because they're bloody huge. They really are. I think uh, looking at the size of the meals that were at, at a table like just close to where I was, I'm thinking there's no way I could finish this. And in all honesty, Jill and I probably struggle together to finish it off. But that's pretty typical fare for country, country pubs. So I ended up having a small pizza and I, even that I just couldn't finish. It was just uh, way too much food for me. So tomorrow will be an early morning start. I want to leave here by quarter to seven just to get me and to Barnsdale with plenty of time. I'd rather arrive two, two and a half hours early than sort of struggle and get there sort of 20 minutes before the bus goes. If something goes wrong, it's going to make it a very awkward sort of period because the next bus I can catch is around about one o'clock in the morning. So I'm trying to avoid that. Given the speed I've been traveling today, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'll just have a bit of a read and then I will go to bed. It's day four of my journey on the East Gippsland Rail Trail and my last day of the trip. Uh, if I'm talking a bit quietly, it's because I'm still in the hotel room and while there were some other workers staying here, I think they've pretty much gone already. I'm just waiting until quarter to seven to leave. It's um, it's 6.30 at the moment and it's still fairly dark. 
but given that I've got 32 kilometres today, I'm confident that I can do it quite comfortably and in the time allowed. But I, I really want to get there with around about two and a half hours to spare. Uh, so I just don't feel like I've got to rush it. And given the pace I've been travelling the last few days, that shouldn't be an issue. This morning, for the first time in the trip, I taped my feet, or at least the front half of my feet. Uh, they were starting to feel a bit sore over the last few days. And I know from previous experience, if I don't tape it, I'm going to have very sore feet by the end of the day. And I'm just going to have to stop and do it anyway. So it just preempts any issues later in the day. And that takes me about 20 minutes to, to tape my feet. Uh, it's just a, a time that I know that that's what it does each time I have to do it. So I was planning on getting up at 5 o'clock, but I was pretty much wide awake uh, from 4. So I got up about 45 minutes earlier than planned. Had breakfast, packed. Uh, really all I've got to do is put my recorder away and put my jacket on. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's not that cold as far as things go, but the the actual temperature is 5.9, but the apparent temperature is the problem. It feels like 0.3. And I know last night, even with the heater on, I ended up having to get my sleeping bag out and throw it over the top of me in the bed because it was fairly cold. And it's that wet cold you tend to get rather than the dry, crisp cold you get in the middle of winter. Um, definitely glad I stayed um, in the hotel last night. It would have been quite crisp staying in a tent, uh, and it means I've gotten up. Uh, I managed to have a nice warm shower, although I could have done that in the caravan park, and uh, just managed to relax, and I just felt myself dozing off around about 8 o'clock, so that's when I ended, ended up going to sleep. Fairly quiet in the pub last night. Apparently it's one of the quietest days I've had in, in a long time. When I went to have dinner, there was only about three or four people in there, and they pretty much left not long after I'd uh, finished my dinner. So it was very quiet. And that's often the issue with staying with pubs. You can end up tending to get a bit of noise. but uh, So I possibly wouldn't have stayed at a pub on the weekend, but certainly during the week it was quite good. All right, I will just finish doing my last little bit of packing up, wait for about five, ten minutes, and then I'm off. Hello, it's 9.02. I've been going for just a bit over two hours. <laughs> Normally I stop at around about an hour and a half to have a break and have a sit-down snack. And I do prefer to eat when I'm stopped rather than eating on the go. And um, I just couldn't find anywhere to sit, basically. It has been raining for a, about an hour or so this morning, although the bulk of the dark clouds have cleared away i've got blue sky with just some light white clouds so i'm not willing to take the rain gear off just yet but it looks like i might be able to in the next half hour or so once i'm convinced it's not going to come back again walk this morning has been pretty good uh had had a couple of steep uh, uphill sections and again that's steep as a relative term uh, overall it's steeper compared to the rest of the the trip that I've done but still very very easy and steady and and nothing that's going to really stress anybody so it's um it the gradient has still maintained itself pretty well I've covered just on 10 kilometers and I'm walking at a pace of around about 5.2 kilometres per hour, so slightly slower than yesterday, but given I've been doing a bit of social media and talking and walking uphill, even a very slight grey tends to slow me down. And again, it's sort of, um, I'm maintaining at quite a steady pace quite comfortably. Overall, a bit more rural this morning, uh, past a number of farms, uh, a lot of cows, No, virtually no sheep today, it's been sheep the last few days, but more cows. Uh, no wildlife as such, apart from birds. And again, birds really is the, the mainstay of the wildlife on this track. I'm just about to go through the world's smallest tunnel. I'm guessing it wasn't the original train tunnel because it would have been the world's smallest train. Uh, but I'm guessing this has been put in at, at a later stage uh, because really it's only around about 3.6 metres high. So if there was a train going through here, it would have been very interesting to see what it looked like. Um, overall, the weather, apart from the rain, has been quite good. 
and temperature wise it's nine degrees feels like 4.9 and looking at the rain radar uh, basically the big front has pretty much gone and there's really nothing apart from a, t a tiny little few spots behind it so I think I am pretty much safe in saying that I'm not going to have heavy solid rain later today I might get the odd light shower here and there but as I said I'll leave it for another half hour before I take my rain pants off still leave the jacket on because it's, it is a bit cool uh, I don't need my puffy jacket but the the rain jacket just gives that bit of extra warmth that I like okay I will finish my morning tea then head off it's 11 o'clock I'm just sitting at a, a road crossing uh, there's actually a chair here, so I thought I'd have just a short rest and do a recording. I've got 16 kilometres to go to Barnsdale, uh, and you can probably hear it uh, to some degree in the background that the wind has come right up. And they had forecast strong winds for today, and we've got them, or I've got them. I think I'm looking down towards Barnsdale, but I'm not quite sure of the location. But it would make sense distance-wise how long I've got to go. I, for some reason, I just feel like I'm travelling really slowly. I'm not, but it just seems to take forever to get to the 16-kilometre mark. Having said that, my GPS watch is telling me I've done just on 18 kilometres, which means my total distance for the day will be 34 kilometres, not 32. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes as I finish off. I know yesterday I thought that uh, I'd have a lot longer than 28 kilometres, and it was pretty much spot on. So we'll see what it's like today uh, and what the distance is. But you know, if, I've, if I do have 16 kilometres to go, that's 34 kilometres, which is more than I thought. And I'm glad I left that tiny bit earlier and allowed a couple of hours of extra time to catch the bus. So if it is 16 kilometres, I'm guessing I'll get there around about 3 o'clock. Um, that's four hours travelling at about four kilometres an hour, roughly. So we'll see how it goes. It's 8 o'clock on day 4 and my last day and the walk is over. One thing that I noticed today and it's been apparent to me over the last couple of, um, of days is the walk I thought was going to end up at 34 kilometres uh, even though it was supposed to be 32 uh, 32 kilometres was actually the formal trailhead itself uh, and was pretty much spot on uh, from the hotel this morning. Where it was different is that if you're being picked up at the trailhead, that's lovely. But in my case, I needed to go to the train station to pick up the coach back to Orbost. And that was basically an extra two kilometres. All up, I ended up doing 113.4 kilometres over the four days. Now, I will go into detail of that in the next podcast, which was realities versus expectations. But there are some reasons why the distances end up being different than what's quoted in the rail trail book. Today, my total distance was 34.08 kilometres. And it took me 8 hours and 37 minutes, averaging roughly around about 4 kilometres per hour. For a couple of reasons, I wasn't moving as fast as I had been yesterday, or for that matter, the day before. And I think basically the trip had caught up with me. And as fit as I am at the moment, which is better than I've been for the last couple of years, it's, it's a long walk. You know, and basically ended up doing 113 kilometres over a four-day period makes a big difference. Today, well, I think, was very much about rural life. And I think the trip th uh, from Bruthen through to Barnsdale, uh, because it, I think it's the more heavily populated end of the, tra the trail, there are more towns uh, more closely put together. Uh, so there wasn't as much... While, while it was a lot of greenery along the side of the trail, there's no doubt about that, uh, the farm life and rural life was more obvious than it was over the last few days. And in itself, that's not a bad thing, uh, but it is definitely a very different sort of day. 
Um, long sections, so some of the sections or the straights were three and four kilometres long. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they are doing trail work. And what they've ended up doing is uh, doing a lot of work putting in uh, the base for what looks like it's going to be a bitumen track. Uh, and certainly I got to a point today where it was bitumen really for the last, I'd say, probably 15 kilometres uh, of the day. Uh, and th- that was I was aware that that was going to be the case. So all up, really good trip. Really enjoyed it. Uh, very different than my usual hikes. Uh, but I think there are some pros and cons with doing trips like that. And we'll talk about that more in detail in the next episode. So that was a series of recordings that I did over the four days of this trip. Usually I find that I will often be able to very easily interview other people on this trail. But in my case, I was certainly the only person walking the entire trail Uh, and I didn't come across anyone else. I came across one bike rider on the third day. I came across quite a few bike riders and a lot of local walkers on the last day uh, once I got closer to Nicholson and Barnsdale. So this is a rarity for me, uh, but given the weather for the first day, not surprising, uh, and it's only when the weather sort of picked up a bit and we got a bit closer to the the larger population centres that we actually managed to go through and interview people a bit more uh, regularly. One comment I would make here is this, for me, was a very different sort of trip, and there was certainly context for that. And in next week's episode, episode 222, I'll talk about my pre-trip expectations and how it panned out in reality. In addition, I'll go through and discuss uh, things that I learned from the trail, uh, recommendations I'd make for walking the trail, and in all honesty, whether it'd be worthwhile considering doing this trail as a hike that I did it as. That's all for this week. We hope you enjoyed. Bye for now.